Welcome back to 49cc Scoot and the T-Max 500 service series. My name's Brent and in this episode I'm going to begin by reinstalling the radiator and then I'm going to do a little bit of work to the front suspension. I need to do a steering head service and I also want to give the front forks a little bit of attention. I verified that all of my cooling system connections were made and that all of them were secure. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove this cap and then I will fill the system with a recommended amount of 50-50 mix of ethylene glycol coolant. The reservoir has two marks, one for low and one for full, so I'm just going to fill it up to the full mark. Now I'm going to check out the steering head bearing. So a simple check that you can do is just to grab either the top or the bottom of this, or even when the fork legs are still in here, the fork tubes, you can grab those and you just try to wiggle it and make sure there's no play in here. If there's any play, then you're gonna to have to take this top piece off so that you can get to the fasteners below it and tighten it up. However, what they actually want you to do at every 12,000 mile check or at 12,000 mile intervals is to take this apart, check, and re-grease the bearings. First, I need to remove the top nut and that requires a 36 millimeter socket. Easiest way to do this is turn this all the way to the left and let it bottom out so it'll hold it for you while you remove that. And this will take a good bit of force because it's a pretty large fastener. Then I can get my cables out of the way and this piece will just pick up and take it off. Now I've got a whole stack of washers and ring nuts. So first there's this little lock you can pull straight up off of there. Now you can see the ring nuts, and you can tell from the design of those that you're going to need a special tool if you want to be able to torque this later. The manual does give you the information about a tool that Yamaha has, or I made my own up. This is a piece of black iron pipe with about an eighth inch wall thickness, and I just took that and ground it down to create the little tabs so that it can fit in there and lock in there, and I can use a ratchet on it or a torque wrench. 
On the other end, I just drilled and then filed a square and welded a plate on the end, so that made up a nice cheap socket. Takes a bit of work though. If you don't care about torque, then you can take something like a screwdriver and tap it to remove these. Just tap it with a hammer and that'll knock these loose and you can do the same thing to reinstall them, but you're not going to be able to install it at proper torque. I'm going to remove these one at a time and I'll be laying them out in order because these do have to go in a somewhat specific order. And then below that, you've got this rubber washer. When you're loosening this, make sure you support the bottom of the steering head because it will slide out once this nut is off of there. So now I'm pushing up on the bottom of the steering stem and finish removing this nut. Go ahead and set that aside. And then got this plate here, this seal. And I'm going to go ahead and take this piece out as well to raise. And then I'm just going to let this slide out through the bottom. Now I'm going to lift out this bearing sitting right here in the top. And then I'm going to start my cleaning by just wiping out the excess grease sitting in the top and bottom races. Yamaha recommends cleaning the bearings and the races with kerosene. Now for me the races you could clean with something more aggressive like a parts cleaner. But for the bearings, you got to be really careful because of the plastic. You don't want to degrade those. But I'm going to go ahead and use kerosene on everything. I've just got an old clean rag here. I'm going to wipe the upper and lower races down very thoroughly. Once both are very clean, take a close look at the upper and lower races here and make sure there's no damage, pitting, any signs of wear like scoring. If you see anything wrong with these, you should replace the races and all the bearings as a set. Now I've got everything that I removed and stacked on my bench left to clean and check. So I'm going to start with what they call the lower bracket. I call it the steering stem. There's a bearing down here that can be slid up and off. And then there is a rubber seal here. Then I can treat this just like the races that I just cleaned and clean it all up with kerosene and a rag. Then take a close look at this bearing race and again make sure there's no damage or wear. Now I'll turn my attention to all these small parts that I've removed. So to begin with, this rubber seal that was on the bracket, I'm just going to wipe that down thoroughly and then that can be cleaned with a mild degreaser, something that's safe for rubber, even something like soap and water, but don't use anything harsh on there. Then inspect it for cracks and damage and make sure it's still pliable. Next up is this lower bearing, so I'll go ahead and wipe off the worst of the grease and then I'm going to drop it into my kerosene. Once it's in there, I'm going to swish it around a little bit to sort of agitate it. You can let this soak if you'd like. Then I'll take just an old standard toothbrush, something very soft, and I'm just going to go over it and make sure all of the grease and grime is gone. Whatever you do, don't use anything that could possibly damage or score this. Again, once it's clean, look it over very thoroughly. Check for any cracking or damage to the plastic. Make sure all of the ball bearings in there roll smoothly and aren't worn down. If everything looks okay, set that aside. Next in line is another bearing that came out of the top part. 
that's going to get the exact same treatment. Then I can keep moving down the line. Next up is another race. Just like everything else, I'll wipe off the excess, clean it with kerosene, and thoroughly inspect it. Then I've got this seal. It's got metal and rubber, so I want to treat it just like the other rubber seal. I want to wipe off the excess and then clean it up with something mild that's safe for seals, inspect it and make sure it's not cracked or damaged and it's still pliable. For the nuts and this lock up here, you can pretty much clean them with whatever you'd like. You can use kerosene and just make sure the threads are in good shape. Then there's another rubber seal here. Treat that just like the other rubber seals. Now that everything is cleaned and inspected and everything looks good here, I can start to reassemble this. So I'm going to begin with this rubber seal that goes on this shaft. I'm going to take a little bit of grease and you want to use whatever kind of grease you're going to use to pack the bearings and for the rest of the service. In my case, I'm using Bell Ray waterproof grease and put a little bit of that on the inside lip And you can put a little on the top if you'd like. Then that should just slide down over that shaft right around the bearing race down there. And push that all the way down. Now I want to pack this bearing with grease before I install it. So you can actually buy a bearing packer that will help you do this. You basically put it in there and press on it and it will push all the grease through there. But honestly, with these, as long as everything's clean, you can just take this, put it in your tub of grease, push that in there, flip it over, push it down on that side, dig it out. You can see it definitely gets plenty of grease around there. You can kind of work it in with your fingers to make sure it's all in there, going all the way through. And just try to get off any excess, because you can really attach a lot of grease to this that you don't need. I can go ahead and slide that over and let that sit all the way down against that race and make sure it moves nice and smoothly. I also smeared just a small amount of grease on the threads up here as the service manual said to do. So now this is ready to go in. I can just set it aside while I deal with the other stuff. And the next thing is this bearing for the top side. I will treat that just like the one that I just did. Go ahead and dunk that in grease and get it packed. Once that's finished, I can set that on a clean paper towel. Then they say to apply a little bit of grease to this rubber seal as well. And also to this rubber seal that sits between the two ring nuts. And that just needs a very light coating. The service manual only shows greasing the race on the lower side of the steering head for some reason, but I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of grease on both the upper and the lower. I'm getting ready to take the stem and reinstall it into the steering head. Again, we should already have the seal and that bearing on there. But I wanted to point out that if you're working alone, especially before you do this, make sure that somewhere in the vicinity you get the bearing, the race, the top seal, and at least one of those nuts where you can reach them because once you slide this through there, you're gonna have to be able to hold this with one hand while you install all that stuff with the other. Slide this up there. Again, holding that with one hand. Then this bearing will go in. Make sure you flip it the right way. It should be kind of with the cone facing downward. And then there's this race that will sit on top of that. Then this cap needs to go on there. A little seal. And then get this nut started. Now with just the lower ring nut on here, just one of these two nuts, it needs to be torqued to 37 foot-pounds initial torque. Now this is going to get a bit confusing if you just look at the torque specs because the initial torque is 37 foot-pounds and the final torque is 10. But basically the first step here is just what I would call a seating torque. I think they're just trying to make sure everything gets seated in there. 
Then it's going to be loosened and retightened. Now I've switched off to a standard ratchet because remember we don't want to use our torque wrenches to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and loosen this up. And I want to get it just to the point that it's basically hand or finger tight. Now I can tighten it to its final torque, which is just 10 foot-pounds. Now I'm going to turn the steering left and right all the way, multiple times. I want to make sure that it feels smooth, there's no binding. I also want to make sure it doesn't move too easily, or it's not too tough to move. As long as that feels okay, then I'm going to try and jiggle it, make sure there's no play in there. If you feel play or if the movement is off, then you'll need to take this stuff back apart, reinspect it, and reinstall it until you get it right. Now I'm going to check over the top and the bottom and just make sure there's not a bunch of excess grease anywhere. Now I can slide on this rubber washer. And begin to install the top ring nut. With the top ring nut, I'm going to install it basically finger tight. And then I'm just going to try to get the slots in both the top and the lower nuts aligned. If you have to, hold the lower nut in place while you tighten the top nut because you don't want to put any more torque on that lower nut. Once those are aligned, then you can take this lock, align two of the tabs with two of the openings here, and slide that down in place. Now I can put the upper bracket over there, then this washer, and then I'm going to install this nut just finger tight. And the reason that this is only finger tight for now is because it holds the fork tubes as well as that lower bracket and those need to be aligned. So really you don't want to do the final torque on this until you've got the tubes in place. Normally what you would do is either install or temporarily install the fork tubes at this point and then that would allow you to tighten the nut while everything is aligned for the upper and the lower. I don't want to waste the time on that because I'm going to do a little bit of work to my forks before I install them, but it is vitally important that this gets tightened so I cannot forget. So I'm just going to take a piece of masking tape and kind of stick it on and wrap it around up here. I will write TQ for torque. That way I cannot forget this. Now I'd like to do kind of a quick fork oil change. So the first thing that I've done was I just cleaned this entire fork up with a general purpose cleaner. And unfortunately for me, I like to ride through the swamps and the corrosion has done a number on part of my fork down here, but there's not much I can do about that. Worse than that, I've discovered rust on the actual fork tubes. And this is pretty significant. You can easily catch a fingernail on any of this. They're very sharp, so I need to take care of that. I've clamped this into my vise with a rag to protect it because I don't want to damage the fork, and also just enough pressure to keep it there. So now this lets me easily access this rusty area. I can take some 400 grit sandpaper and go around that and try to sand that out. I'm not going to be able to remove every trace of this, but I want to make sure it feels smooth so it can't damage anything if a seal does go over that area. And once you get one area done, just look around the rest of it. If you find anything else like this, give it the same treatment. I don't see or feel anything else now, so I'm going to go ahead and give it another quick cleaning. I should have pointed this out earlier, but before you actually clean this up, make sure you take a look at your forks and look for any signs that a seal has been leaking. So if you see fork oil up here, then your seal has been leaking because there should not be fork oil anywhere past the seal that's in here. Also take a good look at your dust seal here, the dust cap, and make sure that that is in good condition. There's no point of doing a quick fork oil change if you're going to have to change all of the seals out, so you want to do that stuff beforehand. For me, everything looks good, so I can proceed with a quick fork oil change. The first thing that I need to do is hold this fork upright while I remove this cap on the top of it. 
and this should have been loosened when you remove the fork so it shouldn't be too tough. While you're doing this hold a bit of pressure down because there is a spring under here. Now I can set my cap aside then I'm going to lay out a few clean paper towels here and there's a spacer. I'm going to go ahead and pull that straight up and out and I'll lay that onto my clean towels. Then I can set this up here and compress it a bit. It's all the way compressed. Now there should be a spacer or a washer in there. There it is. Set that down. And then last should be a spring. Slowly remove that. Trying not to make a whole lot of mess. When you remove this, set it down so that you can tell how it came out of there. Which side is the top and which is the bottom. In my example, it's easy to tell because here's the cap. I know that's the topmost piece. Spacer, washer, and then next thing in line would be this. I know that the top is by the cap, so this is the top of my spring. In this case, it doesn't look like it really matters because it doesn't appear to be progressive rate, but it's just a good habit to be in because some springs it does matter which way is up. Now I'm going to take the fork and tip it into this graduated cylinder and drain my fork oil out. And I'm going to pump that to try and work more of the oil out. Before I dump this oil out, I'm going to take a look and I can see that this is just barely under 500 milliliters. And that'll help me out when I go to add more oil. I'll have a rough idea of how much to put in. I'm just going to wipe these parts down to clean them up and with a cap you want to make sure you inspect the o-ring that's in there they actually say to replace it every time though i haven't done that in the case of these um, but definitely don't use anything to clean that that could damage rubber unless you're going to remove that o-ring first now that that stuff's clean i'm just going to put a very light smear of grease around this o-ring for the cap that way it's ready to go on when i get to that point I put my fork leg back in the vise, setting straight up and down, and I've got this tube compressed. I'm also going to go ahead and put a funnel in here, just to make it easier, because I'm about to fill it up with oil. Yamaha recommends 10 weight Yamaha fork oil. I'm going to use Maxima Racing 20 weight fork oil. I happen to have this stuff around from my smaller scooters. I'm 300 pounds, so generally I need to set them up somehow for extra weight, and springs aren't always easy to come by or cheap. So I have this around. I'm going to give it a shot in here. If it doesn't work out for me, I can always change it out later. Most of the time, if you're happy with how your scooter is handling, then you'd be better off to stick with what's in there. Now, I'm going to set this thing up with fork oil height rather than fork oil volume. So if you're doing it by volume, then what you want to do is fill this up with the same amount of fork oil that you drained out of there, and you should be good to go. For me, I'm going to put a little more than I had in there because I'm going to suck some out when I set the fork oil height. I'm going to go to about 550 and I had 500 that I drained out. I'm going to work this fork tube up and down very slowly at least 10 times because I want to get that fork oil moving and distributed everywhere that it needs to be. But do this very slowly or fork oil could shoot out of the top of this. Now they say to let this sit for 10 minutes for all the air bubbles to work themselves out. I'm going to use this tool to set my fork oil height. So this is just a homemade tool, but you can buy these if you'd like. The homemade version is pretty much just a plate and I welded a little uh, stopper on here. It's got a screw on it. So when this is loose, this brass tube going through the middle, you can adjust how far this stopper is from the end. And this will sit on the top of the forks, and this will go into the fork oil. So if you set this to the fork oil height, in this case I know it's 87 millimeters, so I'll set this to 87 millimeters, and then anything that is below this mark 
I'll use this syringe and that will get sucked out of there. So that will automatically set my fork oil height. So in this case, I've got my calipers set to 87 millimeters and I'm going to go ahead and bump this right up against the end of the caliper and then I can tighten this down. I think I might have moved it a little bit. Actually, it looks good. And that's all ready to use. So all I do is set this down in there and then I will use the syringe that should pull out any oil that is excess. Go ahead and squirt that out into a container. This syringe isn't very big, doesn't have a lot of capacity, so I may have to do this a few times. So now I'm just going to wipe the oil off of the end of this and put it back on there. Use it kind of like a dipstick. And I can see at the end that it has just touched the oil. I've got a film of oil at the end, but it's not up the side of it. So it has set my fork height to 87 millimeters just as I wanted. Now I can reinstall the components just as they came out. So starting with a fork spring, slide that in there gently. Then I've got the spring seat, basically just a washer. Spacer. And at this point I'm going to go ahead and slide this tube up. And finally the cap which I may have to take it out of the vise for because you got to put a good bit of pressure on this. might be easier down low. One tip for this is you can actually spin this fork tube instead of the cap if it makes it easier for you. There we go. Now I'm not torquing this, but I'm just snugging it up by hand for now. This won't be torqued until it's actually installed into the uh, brackets. I've seen a method from Dave Moss Tuning, and I'll put a link to that in the description, that he says allows you to pull some grease into the fork seal, not the dust cap here, but the actual fork seal down here. And to do that, first I need to remove this dust cap, get that up out of the way a little bit. So I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver, and they've got this little access point down here, this opening and carefully push that in. You don't want to damage this seal and get this thing worked up and out of my way. And you got to work all the way around here. Okay. Now I'm going to clean this area between where the dust seal was and the top of the other seal and clip real quick. Just a plain rag wipe over the immediate area as well again and I'll take a little bit of grease and work it into the area just above here all the way around now I'm setting the bottom of the fork on the ground but it's on something soft not just on the concrete and then I'm going to use a rag on the top just to make it a little easier on my hand and he says to give this a few strokes and create a grease ring that you'll see forming down there. There's a look at the ring of grease that it creates. And the idea is that now if I put this down and give it one hard pop, one hard press, then the seal should kind of suck that grease ring into there and lubricate the seal without having to pull everything apart to do it. Which... It seems to have soaked some of that up, but I think I was pretty excessive with the amount of grease that I used. Taking a closer look, it definitely sucked in quite a bit of that because it's not down there and a lot of that has disappeared. I think I used really way too much compared to what he did. So I'll just go ahead and wipe over this. Then I can push my dust seal back down into place. And just look all the way around and make sure it's totally seated. That takes care of one fork tube. Now I've just got to do the exact same thing all over again for the other one. If you look on the inside of the forks, you'll see an L for left and an R for right. And just remember that these are as you sit on the bike. I'm going to start with my left fork. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this this way. That gives me a little more clearance. And try to get that started going up through there. I 
keep twisting this and trying to work it upward until it reaches the top bracket. Remember that I haven't tightened the nut on the top, so I need to align this so that the fork tube can go through there and then continue up. I'll stop when the top of this fork tube is flush or level with the top of this bracket. So you should see that the cap is sticking up above the bracket and the tube is just flush with it. Now I'm going to tighten up these lower bolts just to finger tight first. And then I'm going to lightly snug them for now. Just enough that I know this isn't going to move. Same deal for the upper pinch bolt. Finger tight and just barely snug it up. And I need to do the same thing for the other side. Now all four of these lower pinch bolts will be torqued to 19 foot-pounds. Then each one of these cap bolts will be torqued to 17 foot-pounds. Twenty-two foot-pounds for the upper pinch bolts. And to finally finish my steering stem service, I can remove this reminder. And this nut gets torqued to 85 foot-pounds. Now I want to try to install this bracket cover and the bracket that's got the brake hoses and the horn in there. And that's going to install into these two bolt holes in the bottom of the steering stem. Just make sure you get the bolts through both sets of holes in the cover and in this bracket. And also, these bolts are supposed to have medium strength thread locker applied. I'd like to get the front fender back on next, but for a while I've had this hard clanging noise when I hit a bump, and I discovered that this tab on the other side has broken off. And as you can hear, that's very hard plastic, so it makes that kind of noise whenever I hit a bump. So, I got a replacement, which means I need to take this apart. I'll go ahead and clean and wax this fender, and then put it back together. This may be easier said than done. Normally I'd grab an impact driver when I can't get something like this out, but there's really no room and it's plastic, so for now I'm going to spray some penetrating oil on these and let that sit for a few minutes. I'm also switching over to a different driver. Fits as snug as anything I have. Got three out of four, but this last one just wants to slip. I'll give it another try. There it goes.
I was getting ready to mount this fender and I realized that I only have bolts and washers for these two spots and that didn't seem correct. It seemed like it should have some sort of bushing or spacer. So I looked it up and indeed it is supposed to have the same collars, they call them, that these mounting holes have. Rather than pay 15 to $20 and then wait a week or so most likely, I decided that I'm going to get on the lathe and try to make a couple up. That's going to do it for this video, but if you're not already subscribed, make sure that you do that now and click the bell to receive notifications because next time around I'm going to be checking out the wheels and especially doing a lot of work to the brake system. As always, thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a like.